Yeah, so uh, karibuni sana. Thank you and welcome to uh, our class, which is the Kiswahili Consciousness Study Club. And today we are going on with our study. We've, we've looked at the vowels. We've gone ahead to look at some nouns. We've done some classes of nouns. We've actually arrived at the verbs. And now we want to use the little we have between the nouns the the, the 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 vowels and the consonants we've learned and the verbs we've learned so far to start constructing simple sentences. We'll proceed with our studies, yes, but it's very important that you don't take longer without tying the nouns and the verbs we've learned to start making sentences. Because it's one thing to know a noun like baba or to know a verb like pika, but if you cannot combine them or, or bring them together to make a sentence, then it's not some work progress in terms of studies. So today I want us to just use the class, our class today to try to construct some simple sentences, which is uh, sentences sahihi in Kiswahili, which is simple sentence. And uh, uh, we, we, we want to ensure that uh, we start with very simple things we discussed before. So today, in order for us to make simple sentences, eh, it will mean that we'll have to combine a noun and a simple verb. A noun, for example, like what you said before, the word Baba, which maybe you can remind me, what is the meaning of Baba? Anybody who can recall? Father. Baba meant what? Father. Father. Yes, you're right. Baba meant father. Mm -hmm. So, and how about mama? Oh. Mm -mm. I don't know that. I knew Baba was father. <laughs> His mother uh, is his dad. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I, I, I said I don't know. Maybe mama. Is is it means mother, mama, mother. Mama, yeah. That's why we have the word Mama Africa. Okay. You've either come across such word somewhere, Mama Africa, which yeah. basically means Mother Africa. So we had such word like Baba, Mama. We had the word like um, Mchoto, Brother Glory. <laughs> Hope you can now pronounce it well, Mchoto. Mchoto. Yes, mtoto. So mtoto. Mtoto means child. Then we had mzi, mze. Brother Gary, you remember that? <laughs> Child, elder. Yeah, mze. Mze meant elder or mze. old person. Mze. So we had things like also dada, if you can recall, Baba. which meant Dada, which meant sister. Mm -hmm. So I'll say yeah. Dada, Dada Aida to mean sister Aida. We had a word like Ndugu, which meant brother. Ndugu. Ndugu, Ndugu, Ndugu. So this is some of the simple, basic probably now as you come across. These are names of people we want to refer to. So from these simple words, we could try also to construct simple, we try to combine them with simple verbs we learned last time. Like for example, Lala, which meant, or which means Lala? Sleep. Sleep. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Then there's Leah. Which means cry. Then the speaker, which meant what? Cook. I know you're forgetting. Speaker, cook. And then there's one like uh, tembea. I, I think it's coming for the first time. Tembea. But we've come across it, which means walk. Mm -hmm. Tembea, walk. Then there's other words like oh, Katie. Remember last time we talked about Katie and Kitty? 
keti, which means seat. Then there was one like simama. Simama, we tackled in our last class, which means stand. So we want to see how we can combine, just starting from this basic, how we can combine these nouns and these verbs to make a simple sentence. So for example, simple sentence like, if you want to say, oh, father is asleep. Baba uh, Lila. So that's where we will we'll bring. Remember, there was the okay. The last time, no, we we talked of some prefix, which meant the past tense and present tense. So remember the word me, na, and uh, ta. Mm -hmm. You remember? We talked about them. Me, na, and ta. Where me meant past, past tense. And uh, na meant present, you remember, present tense. This was the last class. Then ta meant future. It's being used to refer to future tense. So where we want to talk about past tense, we use the, we bring the word me in between the noun and the verb. But there's one word we still have to refer to. So let's try first of all, using those basic rules. So we'll say, Baba, me, Lala. But now because you're referring to uh, nouns, living things, we'll always use the word a. Ah. So we'll always put the word a ah before me. So we'll say, Baba, Ame. Can somebody read that? Baba Ame yes, Lala. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Baba Ame Lala. So this A will be like, uh, if we trans if we translate this to English, let's take it to English, then you see, means father is asleep. Present, last tense. What is asleep. Is asleep. But me is not. Is present is past tense. May that is was asleep, so maybe may that is past tense. Now the word is or was can still make this because when you say father is asleep, which means he's already asleep, so it can be either is or was. But when you bring the word was, and this is why we brought the confusion in the last class sometimes. When you use the word father was asleep, could probably mean that he's no longer asleep. Okay. He's either now right. awake. So, so if you say, past tense. Yes. But when you say, like, like, okay, let's try to see this. When you, when you say the word father is asleep, it means that he's already asleep. But when you say father is sleeping, is it the same with the word father is asleep? Can it mean the same thing in terms of time yeah. with the duration yeah. taken? But I said it was present tense. So that's what I was, uh, I'm trying to bring the differences here in terms of these tenses. When I use the word father is asleep, which Baba Amelala, it means that already the sleep or the action of sleeping has taken place or took place some times back and is not awake yet. But when you use, instead, if you do the translation in English and say, Father was asleep, it will not connotate the same one in Kiswahili because in Swahili, when you say Father was asleep, it means in Swahili it will be Baba Alilala, Ama Alikwa Melala, which means is now awake. But the Kiswahili will use the right word as Baba Amelala, which is father is asleep, to mean that the or the father here had started sleeping some times ago, not now. Mm. But when you use the word father is sleeping, it means he is in the process. Probably it has not started long ago, but he has started sleeping, you see? And that's why it brings it to Swahili. They will use the word instead of 
was, they'll use the word now, Baba. They'll say Baba. They'll say Baba Analala. So they'll bring Na for present tense, Nala. which is present continuous. In this present tense, it also means, it can also means present continuous tense. Nala. So you say Baba Analala, which means the father here is sleeping. Analala is sleeping. Of course, even the word father is asleep doesn't mean he's already awake. It's yes, sleeping, but in this aspect, it means that the sleeping started long time ago, sometimes back. But when you say father is sleeping here, probably the connotation can be it might not mean that he started long ago, but you are talking at the current state, he is still sleeping. So analala. That's why Sohil will say for Father is sleeping, they'll say Baba Analala. While father is asleep, they'll say Baba Amel. Then, if it is about father trying or planning to sleep, they'll say Baba Atalala. Which will mean father will sleep or you can bring the word will be will be sleeping so these are two so, aspects of yes question brother glory uh, no, i was going to try a different Sentence is uh, Dada uh, Anala Anna Leah. Yeah, is crying. Yeah. Yes, that will be correct. Dada mm -hmm. Anna Leah. No. Dada Anna Leah will now mean sister is crying. It's A N L I A, not I L A. -A. Is it A N? Yeah. Yeah, that's the correct spelling. Dada and Alia. Yeah. Yeah. So this is how we'll make just some simple sentences by by actually combining uh, a noun and probably the verb here, which is live. And we we'll say Dada and Alia which means the sister is crying here. Any other trial will perfect on how we make perfectly these simple sentences. Anybody who can try to use any of the, the verbs we've been trying here to construct some simple sentences using the verbs we have, the nouns we have, and actually putting into context the past, present, and the future tense we have already. Uh, so Nungu, Nungu, and Dungu, which is Ndugu, um, the word is, is Ndugu. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, and Anana uh, te, Tembia, Tembia, or Tembea, Temba. It's Tembea, not Temba, Tembea. Tendea. Tembea so or Tendea? Tembea. 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 Brother so um, uh, is, walk, has, is walking. And a Tembea means he's walking. A Metembea, which means. Yeah, so it will be Ndugu and Atembea. So here, you can also replace by your name. For example, you can say, Gleroy and Atembea. So probably by saying that, we mean that you, here now Gleroy is working. So Gleroy and Atembea. So you are capable of constructing a simple sentence by saying Gleroy and Atembea. 
You say Ida anatembea. You say Coco anatembea. But if you want to say Brother Glero, then you say Ndugu Glero. You see? So when you say Ndugu Glero anatembea, then probably you're not the Glerowing. Mm. It's working. So Ndugu Pigbin anasafiri. Ndugu Pigbin anasafiri. Mm. That's so safari is traveling. I think we, we tackle it sometimes back when you're talking of safari. Safari. Remember, the word safari came from the word safari. When you say safari, it's journey or a trip. Remember we say that, safari. So safari is the noun here. But the verb here is safari. So safari is the noun, journey. Safari is the verb of the safari, which means traveling or having a journey or being on a journey. I don't know if the English was saying journey, which is not there. The right word is the journey, and you are on a journey or you're on a trip. So safari, that's why you see safari rallies. You remember you've had a, something like safari rallies. Mm. Yeah, we, I think we had one last, it was last two weeks ago, three weeks ago in Kenya here. Where those whatever vehicles came over here for, they call it safari rally, which is basically the vehicles competing in the wilderness there in the game parks and whatever. So they're in what you call safari rally. Yeah, it's uh, um, track racing. Yeah, it's like racing. Mm. Yes. So that's why you get the safari and safari. You know, any other person who can use, try to use the word cook or sit or stand, the simple verbs you have already here to construct some simple sentence. I, I thought I'd try um, um, Nidua, Nidji, Nid, oh no, that's brother. I, I wanted sister. Sister, sister, sister is there. I had sister. Sister is Dad, Dada. Dada, um, me, Pika, but I, I, I think there should be an ing on it. No, not me. It's me. But you bring a before the any of the past tense you have or present tense. So you use the word Dada a. Then which one do you want to pick? Do you want to pick me, na, or ta? I wanted to cook me, me. So it will be me. Then you pick the yeah. verb. Pika. The verb is the word is pika. Mm -hmm. So can you read it now? Dada me pika. Not me. This I here. I me pika. I me yeah. I me pika. Yes, I'm that would mean. Pika. That would mean. Uh, sister is cooking. No, it will not be is cooking. Here Pass. me. So it means it's, it's has cooked. cooked. Okay, has cooked. Mm. Yes. Sister has cooked. Yes. Yeah, that would be a, a very simple sentence. Okay. So if you wanted to extend these simple sentences, you can say, for example, the sister has cooked. What has she cooked? What do you maybe want to say she has cooked? Samaka. What? What? Dada Amika. I'm a pika. Um, Sister I'm Valerie. Pika. Yes, I'm a pika. I'm a pika. Uh, no. Um, Samaka. It's not Samaka, it's Samaki. Samaki, fish. Samaki. So Samaki is fish. It's mm, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so Okay, fish. then um how about fried rice? Dada and pika. I don't okay. know what rice is. Now the rice, 
the rest for us will be we call it mchele when it's not cooked but when it is cooked we say wali why what why we why wali. wali wali okay yes wali is now cooked rice which just call it rice for your what we call it rice so to us in Swahili, when the rice is rice, we call it we call it mchele. That's the rice before it's cooked. When it's cooked, we call it wali. But this how you cook it sometimes. You know how they cook it with meat. You mix the meat inside. I don't know. We call it pilau. Have you seen? I don't know. Glad mm. of that sounds of, oh. Indian pilau. Pilawa or pilau sounds an Indian rice, oh. maybe. Pilau. Pila. Pila. Pila okay. rice. So it is pilau in Swahili, and pilau means that rice that has some. Let, let me try to show you the picture of pilau, probably, to get to understand what pilau is. It's actually rice cooked with some ingredients, like you add some, you add some, some meat inside. Means means meat. Not minced meat. It's just pure meat. Meat and um, sauce um, seasoning. I think East African cooking has a lot of that. So jollof rice. Yeah, but jollof rice has has red red uh, tomato in it, but uh, their the, rice the, doesn't. The Gambians, their rice has like the Gambians uh, yellow rice. I think the jollof rice. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah, these are jollof. So in Spain, it's called pilau. Oh, right. Okay. I was thinking of it more like the, the last one, the yellow. I was thinking of it more like the last one, the yellow one. And then the rice no. is inside it. That's the jollof rice, yes. Yeah. Slide down, Tijin. You want to see more ingredients? <laughs> No, oh, it's just what Sister Ida is referring to, so you can see it better. It's yeah, this, this one that has the green on top of the yellow. Which one? This one here? Yeah, that one. I think of oh. that more East African. That or the yes. one before it. This one? Yeah, that or the other one, yeah. Okay, so this one, the one here, the one in the first, it can be cooked with beef. They call it beef pilau, or they can use chicken. They call it chicken pilau. Okay. What about the one at the end, the yellow one? This one is mushroom. Oh, okay. That's why they call it mushroom pilau rice. Okay, okay. okay. So basically, this is the pilau, which is a rice, but not in the main category of rice. So the other rice, which we said wali, is a pure rice, which is cooked rice. It's called wali. So wali... It can be this plain rice. Okay. Yeah, this is wali. The plain rice. Okay. So you can mention that, for example, as you said, you can say, uh, Dada may pick a pilau, or Dada may pick a wali, or Dada may pick a anything else you can be mentioning as a part of what Dada has cooked. You see? So it will be Dada ame pika samaki, or Dada ame pika wali, or Dada ame pika pilau, or Dada ame pika ugali. Yes, ugali is our stable food over here. Like I do take ugali every time, every day probably. Sister, do you know ugali? I was wondering, is it like, is it like some sort of flour mash? Is maize. Maize meal. Okay, maize. Okay. It's a staple food in Kenya most of the time. Let me show you what it is. Uh, all of Southern Africa. Okay. Okay. Yeah, mm. okay. Okay. All of Southern Africa, not just Kenya. Okay. It looks like almost a bread. <laughs> it, 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 it depends bread on maize how you, or whatever, you yeah. It depends on how you prepare it. They prepare it differently in Zimbabwe than in South Africa or, or Mozambique. Okay. 
because mm. we would have um uh we would have kenki or we would have um oh it it, it would be softer than this this looks bread like or well, you're talking about um in Ghana, we would have either kenki which is corn Oh, okay. this is, actually, this is corn. I remember I have a picture of Brother Glero is seeing the corns <laughs> sometimes back when he was around. He, he was actually right. amazed on the variety or the big scale of land we have corns. Brother Glero, you remember mm -hmm. that big? So everybody yes, has planted yes. it all over, and it's for actually for food. It's our everywhere food. around the road, yeah. Yeah, everywhere yeah, around the road. Was, yeah, but it it's was also. Yeah, there's also a brown ugali. Yeah, there's brown ugali, which you can cook using either uh, cassava, you can use millet, you can use various things to uh, cook your ugali. Mm -hmm. So it depends basically what, what you want to use for your ugali, but the variety of, uh, of things you can use actually to prepare ugali. I, I know in Uganda they use even uh, banana. Okay. This mushroom. So that would be our, our, our plantain would be fufu. And then that would be very soft. Yeah, you call it fufu. Oh, soups and th soup. No, fufu. Fufu, yeah. Yeah, it should be close to something like that, fufu. Yeah, but ours is soft so that you can yours looks yours looks hard, bread like rather than soft, so oh. If you use something like cassava, it should be very soft. <laughs> okay. You mix you mix maize yeah. and cassava. You mix the mix of maize and cassava. You get a very soft one. That sounds more like a West Africa. The problem with the soft one is that you eat it. It gets your stomach without you chewing. So it just pile in your stomach, pile, pile, pile. Then when you stand up, you are not able to stand up because the stomach is very heavy. That, that's for food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was very surprised. I, I chew mine and everybody says, you don't chew, you just swallow, you just swallow. <laughs> yeah, you just swallow, but at the end of the day, you cannot know when you're full. So <laughs> when yeah, you're trying to be full, okay. you may not be able to stand. So this is actually some, we call it ugali. Oh, I, I, I know we have different names for it. Like now you are saying fufu, but it's basically still back to ugali, what Swahili call ugali. So this ugali can be served with anything. For example, it can be served with, but you cannot serve it with pilau. The other pilau we've seen, you rarely have to serve ugali and pilau, but you can serve ugali, for example, we go back with what you call nyama. Nyama is meat. So you can serve ugali with what you call nyama. Nyama is beef. You can either have variety of nyama. This is called nyama choma, if you see my screen. Can you see my... It looks very good. <laughs> yeah, this is now nyama choma, which means meat that has been actually been roasted or, or whatever. We put them on a grill. So this is nyama choma. So you can serve your ugali with nyama choma, or you can just have nyama which is cooked, which means you can say, Dada, I'm a pika nyama. Oh, when you say you nyama... Up, you see that thing? Is that potatoes, the, the last one? On one. the right, at the top. The top at the right. Yeah, this one is potatoes. a this is a potato. It is potato. But probably okay. in Kenya, we have two types of potato. We have this sweet potato and what they call Irish, and we are saying it's not Irish, it's Kenyan potato. <laughs> they call it Irish potato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The white potato. No, there's a, there's there's potato which is different. There are two different varieties of potato. We call them uh uh, there's, there's viazi. In Swahili, they call I them know there's viazi. sweet potato and then there's Irish potato. Yeah, this is the viazi vitamo, sweet potatoes. Yeah. yeah. This is sweet potato. So in Swahili, it's called viazi, viazi vitamo, viazi vitamo. Okay. So vitamo is the sweet. Okay. So it okay. is viazi. potatoes. Viazi is potatoes, then the vitamu means sweet ones. So it is sweet okay. potatoes, viazi vitamu. So sometimes back when we were growing up, either you could be given uh, uh, something like a porridge made of uh, groundnut. Groundnut is called njugu. 
These are some few words. You either you need to have a pen right somewhere. There's what you call njugu, N G U G U. It's called. Let me let me just text it here. It's called njugu. Can you see my screen past the word viasi vitamu? Mm -hmm. There's this word yeah. called njugu. So njugu is a groundnut. So in our tradition, sometimes back they could actually grind the groundnuts to be like a like a flour. Then they make porridge like a porridge which is made up of the groundnut. So they use the flour of the groundnut to make porridge. Then you serve a porridge together with this sweet potato. So you dip the sweet potato in that porridge and you eat. And that could be a breakfast enough for the whole day. It was a strong food for you to survive. And you could also be planting them, uh, the sweet potatoes. Like my in my home back in the villages, we used to plant the sweet potatoes. So these basically are the sweet potatoes, which we call biazi vitamu in Kiswahili. You see, they are all over mm -hmm. in various varieties. But this one is not Viazi Vitamu. These are now is the, the other Viazi you're talking about, this one. But it's still called Viazi. Irish potato. Yes, yeah, no, this is now the Irish. Well, it's, it's still it's called listed. potato. Yeah, but it's listed as Viazi, same as the sweet potato. No, but it's not Viazi Vitamu. It's just Viazi. Okay. The one above is Viazi. You see this one? This one is called Viazi. Viazi is a potato. But Viazi is a sweet potato. Such formality. I thought they were doing something special. Who, who, who are we talking about? Coco is getting oh, in, somebody, in instruction. There's oh. somebody whose audio was on. I've switched it off. Okay. So the word viazi is potato, <laughs> which is this one, yeah. which is this one we see here. But viazi vitamu is the sweet potato, the one which I showed you. So they're all potatoes, but the other one is a sweet potato, and this was just a potato. <laughs> Viazi, what? The sweet potato? Viazi, Vitamu. Yeah. The other one was Viazi, Vitamu. Vi Vitamu. This one. Okay. Viazi, Vitamu. 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 Yes, Vitamu. Viazi, Vitamu. Viazi, Vitamu. This is now sweet potato. Hmm. So we go to the market, we can ask uh, Vizazi, Vitamu. Vizazi. Vizazi. Not Vizazi. Not Vizazi. 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 Okay. Vizazi. Vitamu. Vizazi. 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 Vitamu. Don't get rid of the eye. Vizazi. So this one is a sweet potato. So this part of the what you can either prepare, you know how you cook it, you just dip it in some in something, then you you, you boil it. Mm -hmm. So you can use sufuria. You know sufuria? No. But, sufuria um... is, we call it sufuria in Kiswahili. It's basically what you use to cook this pot. Oh, you're talking pots. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, this is majorly used in most part of East Africa. We call it sufuria. So you can use this sufuria to actually cook your viazi. So you put your viazi inside. And then once you have your viazi inside, you put some water. And then you just allow it to boil for some time. Then it's it's ready. Okay. But there are people who use this modern one. This one you see here. I don't know if it cooks faster. It's probably more stable on the stove, doesn't okay. the other ones would be maybe if you had stones around them or something. Oh no, they can be used in Naga. <laughs> you can put them on Oh Naga. really? They look they don't look as stable. No, they you can put them in Naga. So you can use this one to prepare your viazi. But there's another thing you can also take. There's a, so we are discussing stem what of kupika. You can use what you call Nduma. These ones. 
You know this? Arrow roots. Mm -hmm. Oh, Arrow okay. Root. I need a name. Um, You've not no. seen these around? Um, no, they look a bit like cocoa yam, but it's not cocoa yam. They are called, uh, they are called ndu, ma, ndu, ma, ndu. But they are cocoa yam, aren't they? Or cocoa? They're so not cocoa. Arrow roots. Arrow roots are slightly different, I think. This is arrow roots. This one's here. Yeah. Mm, it's like a bit like cocoa yam. Yeah. I mean, no, yam is, this is yam. yam. You see this one? Yeah, this yeah one but yam. There's, there's, small, there's small yam called cocoa yam that has the red, slightly reddish to it. Okay, so this is yam. It's quite different with these arrows. Mm -hmm. I think you, you, you probably know the difference between yam and arrows based on the English translation, you can easily get the difference. So the the, the, the Numa is actually totally uh, different a bit because they grow in where it's so watery. I don't know where the arrows, or the yams grow, but this is in where it's more watery. Okay. We pick them as roots. They become the roots. That's why we call them arrow roots. They actually pick from the roots. Okay. And is it such so, thing as cocoa? We don't cocoa. We don't have cocoa over here. The only the only thing we have is coffee, <laughs> and and uh, and uh, the one in the coast. Yeah, there's a uh, similar to yam. Uh, is it called cocoa? It's called cocoa. Co cocoa. Um, uh, or dashin. It's another name. Another vegetable. The, the dasheen, I think, is a bit bigger than the cocoa yam. Mm, uh, that looks like. That. I thought the arrow arrow root looks a bit like them. No, no yeah, looks like cocoa yam, slightly. Mm. Yeah. So basically, these are part of the things you can cook and use for breakfast. So you can use uh, viazi vitamu or this nduma. Nduma is called nduma. 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 Duma. And this is the plant that produces that Duma. Mm. <laughs> we have some of those in our garden. We don't know what <laughs> yes. they are. We've so never them but, but these ones, I, I can't remember the name just at the moment, but you can use the, the leaves. They're soft leaves, not the... Um, and, and, and you can make like stews with them. Make what? Yeah, stews. It's it's sort of like using it as um, uh, what would they call it? Um, spinach. It's a, a sort of spinach stew. Okay. But there's another plant that looks like this. If it's got, if the leaves are hard, it's not the same thing. You see the one in the middle. That one's soft. Is yeah, that one is soft leaves, and you can use that like um spinach and make um yeah. You know. So basically, if you uproot this, you get now the Nduma down there when you uproot them. So that's how you get them. When you do, when and you that would be the, cocoa yam to us. Like you see, this man is doing here. Basically, <laughs> yeah, that would be cocoa yam to us. That's not this one. Outside. We have very similar plants in our garden, but we don't <laughs> We were not, I didn't think it was um, vegetable. I thought it was just decorative. No, yeah. well, there, there is one that's decorative and there's one that's for cooking. And the one mm. that's for cooking is absolutely delicious. You should start using it. Ask somebody mm. around so us. This, so today, uh, 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 we've been trying to learn some of the few things you can cook, probably uh, uh, for your breakfast. So you can say, Dada, I'm a pika and duma. Dada amepika viazi vitamu, you see? But there is another one, which is called malenge. It's also being used in Af East Africa for breakfast. Mm. It's called ma malenge, this pumpkin. pumpkin. We call it uh, buga. Buga. 
Yeah, Buga. Yeah. I just know it as pumpkin. In the allotment, mm. it's pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, so Malenge. basically, in, in Swahili, it's called Malenge. 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 Yeah, so also this you can use for your breakfast. You can boil it and eat it, mm. or you can use it to maybe prepare the the chapatis. You know chapati? The, the second one really? on the top. Yeah, this one. At the end, that one, yeah. Yeah, so you can oh, use the same nice. example. Chapati? Chapati. It's used to make... Really? There's how women know. mix it to produce this chapati. There's how they do it. Oh, what? They okay. use they use the, the um, pumpkin to make chapatis. Yeah. Yeah, there is how they smash the pumpkin to produce uh, some, some I don't know, like some powder that they mix with the, 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 the flour for chapati. And then they produce this chapati mix or chapati made of also pumpkin. Oh wow! The so last, is delicious. Like, the last mm -hmm. slide on the top there says why pumpkin maling malinga is are bad for you. Yeah, they are saying why it's bad. I don't know for your health or for your child. They might for be having their reason. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there goes so, uh, Halloween or whatever. I don't know what they're saying, but. Uh, Basically, so malenge, malenge can be used for also breakfast. You can either take okay. it as it is, or like you see here, you can take it as it is there with your breakfast or for your breakfast, or you can take it as this one when it is served now. This one is now a served one. When it is now ready for this one. So you can take it with the tea or anything you want to take it with. So you can also say that I'm a pick malenge. So malenge, uh, vitamu. And in Duma, our, our traditional breakfast meals, instead of uh, bread, we didn't have bread by then, or people don't like bread. Some people in the villages may even find it hard to get bread. You said it's called? What's that? Okay. Oh, now, so, also, yeah. this, this, their leaves. You see the leaves? Yep. The leaves are also eaten. Are they pumpkin leaves? So, Yes, pumpkin leaves. Okay. You can mix them with other ingredients to get whatever you want. These ones here. Okay. Yeah, you can cook them. You just, you just clean them. They look very different from the leaves that we normally have at pumpkins. No, they're the pumpkin leaves. There's something close to pumpkin. It's not pumpkin, but it's close to pumpkin. It's called calabash. Something that then brings the calabash, the calabash that you use for for taking porridge. This one, mm -hmm. this is almost close to, pumpkin, but it's not pumpkin. But Where it comes from tree. The leaves that you just showed us are they calabash leaves? No, those are pumpkin leaves. Those are not calabash leaves. Okay, they look very different from our pumpkin we have here. <laughs> no, but to, maybe the the. There's different variety of pumpkin over there, but to us, uh, that's mm -hmm. the that's the leaves that I'm, I'm aware of, and uh, is around here. Yeah, I do take it sometimes for my meal, for my 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 night meal or something like that. We call it matawi amaleng, which is the leaves of pumpkin. Yeah, they look like but... the teacher leaves. They look like spinach leaves. Yeah, they look close to spinach leaves, but they are, they and they that's... have some. That's... Is that machicha? No, there's okay. what you call machicha, which is which is different. Mm. Can I ask you about the calabash? You can't eat anything on the calabash, not the leaves or anything. It just it's just no. as you make decoration decorative things with it. Yeah, people don't eat anything. Yeah. I mean it's even true. the people seeds don't... aren't eaten. No. Because pumpkin seeds you can eat. Oh, spinach. No, this is not spinach. Yeah, that's machicha. This is, not, this is machicha. It's not spinach. Oh, okay. There's another leaf close to spinach. Okay, this other said is spinach, but this is yeah. machicha. So this one is the spinach, but this one is machicha. It's close to. Oh, okay. Okay. This okay. Is traditional. These are part of traditional food. Sometimes we can take or you prepare. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can have those for breakfast or. Not okay. for breakfast, really. We, you can take it with the, either uh, your meat, 
you know, anything mm-hmm. else. You can decide how you want to cook it, or you can take it to Ugali directly without adding anything. You can take them with Ugali. Okay. Yeah, they are called chicha. So basically, those are a few of the things we are trying to look at in regards to what you can eat. We've divided a bit, but at least we, we can know very well that you can construct a sentence of dada, I may pick anything you wanted to mention there. Either I may pick a malenge, I may pick a duma, I may pick a zuyazivitamu, or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So here we've moved, we've moved away from just simple sentence of dada, I pick a, to add something a bit, like dada, I may pick a nini, I may pick a samaki, I may pick a wali, I may pick a pilau, I may pick a gali, you see, all those sorts of things. And others who, who cook uh, um, baba, uh, I may pick a... yeah. Baba may pick a, you can say baba may pick a samaki, baba may pick a pilau, dada may pick a, mama may pick a, mtota may pick a, you can say anything there, as long as mm-hmm. you have other verbs you can put in. But as long as you know baba may pick a, or ata pick a, or an pick a, or a mepika, you see, you can use anything. As long as you have these words, now you can construct them with any verb you have to make a, a simple sentence. Mm, okay. I think that's now better. Any questions before you almost... I think we have to take it by bits so that we can mm-hmm. be able to proceed. So any, 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 any question in regards to this? In regards to what you want to ask to add or what you think of adding, we'll move further to now in the next class to expound further, moving from that simple sentence of Baba Mepika to move to either Baba Mepika Samaki Kwa, because you can either have or Baba Mekula Samaki Kwa, we say you eat beef and, you see, you bring something, beef and ugali. So it should be Baba Mepika I'm a cooler, for example, not pika. The word here is now cooler, which means you've eaten. The father has eaten uh, uh, beef and ugali. So, Baba, I'm a pika uh, or I'm a cooler, samaki kwa ugali. So, we we'll try to have some expounding sentences that can then can help you start communicating or making a proper sentence. Because at the end of the day, the purpose of learning is to, for you to make a sentence. <laughs> like now, Brother yeah. Gary is saying, go to the market and say, this idea or to say they want maybe malenge or they want mm-hmm. maybe samaki or they want maybe mm-hmm. pilau you see anything they want mm-hmm. they can go now to the market and make a sentence and say they want this pilau mm-hmm. yeah pilau was good you remember pilau <laughs> yeah yeah it's the rice and meat yes rice and meat we call it pilau wow. mm-hmm. And samaki and I learned, fish. Um, fish. Some sam, samaku. Yeah, samaki. There's, samaki. There's, okay. There's one that they have not been able to have their English name for it, but it's a very common in Kenya. That I don't. They call it the daga. I was asking if uh, some of you know it over there. Let me show you what it is. In Swahili, basically just known omena. That's the name they know it with. They just call it omena. Yeah. Let me show you what it is. Oh, yeah. Um, anchovies. Or sprats, oh, yeah, anchovies. Is it the what? small ones? Yeah, the small ones. It's either anchovies. That one is anchovies. The one the first one is probably sprats. The bigger version of anchovies. No, so the anchovies, they, they feed them to the chickens and to some of the... No, no. Oh, all you this can is... put in fish, in um, peppers and things. All this is omena. Anchovy. Mm-hmm. This one here, you see women sell it omena. using those things. Yeah, they cook it on the street. You can buy it on by portion. Oh, nice. Yes. They're even in supermarkets. Okay. They are packed in supermarket. What already fried? Oh, yeah, already fried, deep fried. Okay. Oh, mini. Ah, uh, you see the one that that there at the top now that is sprats, the bigger ones. No, no to us it's still omena. There's a bigger one. It's still the same in... one. Oh, that looks like a bigger than the, the very tiny, tiny. There's no right word for it. 
this is it. In you know, it's basically from our language side or my community, because you are the people who reside mostly okay. on the lake side. This one is okay. a bit bigger. This one is a bit bigger than the original one we were talking about. Okay, okay. Yes. Oh wow. Looks nice. But with us we call it Ofulu. Ofulu. Okay, Ofulu. Or Fulu. It's basically the big the big Omena one. It's a bigger version of that Omena, the big version. Okay. A bit bigger than the initial one. So basically what you get is that Omena. The Omena one, we call it Omena or Omena. I don't think if he has any name in English. I mean, I, I'm not sure. Let me, check. Let me check if they have its name in English, you see. They call it Check silver, for silver. anchovies. Check for anchovies. That would be. The spelling is? Oh, dear. A N, um, yeah, there we are. Anchovy. This one. Yeah, any okay. of those. Yeah, anchovy fish. Oh, for fish. Yeah, yeah it's no, fish. Missed, it came up. Go back. A N C H. O V. O V I E S. Fourth one. Third one down. Yeah. Anchovy. Go. Yes. Fish images. They're very small, yeah. like your Omina. Yeah, yeah, it seems so. It seems very small like them. Yeah, but if you go, Glenn, if you go around there, just ask them for Omena, or sometimes they call it Daga. Mm. I think in in, 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 in court there, they'll call it Daga. That would be the right way they'll call it. Daga. Yeah, so go to the market as Daga, D A G W H Daga. Yeah, we've seen them in the market. Yeah. Basically, what you do with them, you 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 put some warm water, you put them on warm water, you clean them, then you put them aside, you put fry, fry, fry oil, you fry some oil, then put dip them there, then you deep fry them, then now you add maybe if you have tomatoes and uh, any other thing you can add now and then it's ready. Mm. Oh. Yeah, That's so basically, this was, we, my, so you my mom your, used to. You got your, um, that first one, you got your, oh, what did you call it? Um, Ugali. Ugali. Ugali, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you got all the it, things you were telling us about. <laughs> yeah, my mom used to sell these when I was young. So we could, when I was in my early upbringing, my mom could go to the lakes to bring this. Then I could gather the package, then I go to the shops around the reserves. I was staying close to the reserves where the white men had pushed the, the people from their land and then take them under reserves. That land was left for the tea farms. So the local community were put in reserves, some small, small portions of land. So I could go to those reserves to sell for them the omena. They gave me the money. And that's what sustained my life when I was young. Basically, this the sale of this omena, which my mm -hmm. parents was doing. So, so I'm quite aware mm -hmm. of this. Omena. And it's very good for Omega, the, the brain thing. It's very good for it. Well, it's got lots of calcium because of the bones, I think. Yes. Yeah, they got, but also they are good with some good Omega, Omega-3. Okay, okay. Yes. yes, so basically, those are the few things we could actually add to what we are learning today in terms of Kupika. At least you will now have some few words of variety of food you can go ask for. For example, that omena, nyama, nyama choma, which is the fried meat. You can you can go for either suku nini, nduma, which is the arrowroot. You can either go for viazi vitam, which is sweet potato. So all these are part of things you can either go and purchase or even prepare for your other meats or your breakfast. So was if there, there's no... Was there, there another name, name for yam or is that Swahili? Yam. Yam. Uh, uh, let, me, let me check. It's very rare around. Let me check if it has any other name inside, but it's very rare around. There, there must be a name for it. But let me just check, because it's very rare around. You know, they still call it Nduma. 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 But the Nduma. same thing is the hour. The hour is Nduma. That is the same name they give it to Swahili, but you no, know, it, it's like it's a different variety of arrowroot. You see? Oh, I see. 
Okay, but they had a bit really over. Yeah, in Nduma could be all um, ground vegetable, yeah? Yes. But potato is uh, visa. Viazi vitamu. Viazi, different. Viazi is different. Vitamu. That's sweet potato. Okay. In Duma. Duma, Duma is used for both yam and arrowroot. So, so, it yeah. Duma. so it means yeah. they are the same they are the same family of plant but in different categories but english so actually we... bring the english bring the big difference as one being yam and one being arrowroot but so still mm -hmm. call them all Duma. the viazi is viazi sweet or is it potato the viazi is uh, potato, yeah. and then yeah. the vetuma, vetuma is sweet. Sweet, yeah. Vitam, vitam, vitam is the sweet. is sweet. Okay. Sweet potato. All right. So viazi, you could get either um, ordinary potatoes or sweet potato. No. But viazi vetuma yeah. is sweet potato. Yeah, viazi vitam. Tam. Vitamu. The Vitamu butter is the sweet. Yeah, the sweet potato. Yeah, and we are the Vitamu. Sweet potato. It's sweet. So if you go to the market and ask for Viazi, they'll give you the other Viazi one, the, the so called Irish potato, which is not Irish. They'll give you the Irish. Mm. If you say, if you say, Nataka Viazi, I want Viazi. Nataka Viazi, they'll give you the other one. But if you say, Nataka Viazi Vitamu, then they'll give you this one, Vitamu. Don't worry, French fries seem to be French fries wherever they are. Yeah, wherever they are, they are total French. Uh, like you have one, they, we have one here, they are calling French beans, which is not French beans, it's beans around here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically, that's, that's the end of uh, part of our lesson today. So we'll proceed. We'll get is there more. A, do you know of yes. butter bean? Have you heard of butter, butter bean? They're let, yellow. Let, let, they're, they're sort of yellowy beans, uh, big oh, ones. Fruit. Butter beans. I'm not sure. Huh? Let me check it. Mm -hmm. Let me check they don't it seem in. to have a skin on them, or do they? Yeah, they don't seem to have a skin on them. They just seem to be a yellowish bean. Big. Oh, I'm trying to see them here. Just that is, is I haven't come across them. But I'm trying to see them here. I'm trying to Google to find them. Yeah. They're these ones. Well, yeah, the, the second yeah, white one. Yeah, yeah, that's butter beans. This one? Yeah. yeah. And they're now called lime bean or whatever. But do they, is there a Swahili equivalent? No, they're saying Maragwe, Maragwe Stiagi. Okay, read that one. Maragwe. You see, Maharagwe Siagi. Maharagwe, Maharagwe is the beans. Maharagwe, Maharagwe. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. It's ma Maharagwe. Ma Maharagwe. Maharagwe. That's the name for a beans. Any beans is called Maha Ragwe. Ragwe. So yes, any bean. Ragwe. Maha Ragwe. Maha Ragwe. Maha Ragwe. Yeah, Maha Ragwe. Uh, but that seems to cover all beans. Yeah, it's all beans. So the categories of beans, now like what you say, butter bean, this is what they call Maha Ragwe, Siagi. That is based on whether they are available in other parts of the country. That's how the names come in, you see. Mm. You learn that for the first day. Kidney beans, because, uh, yeah. No. I haven't seen any um, butter beans, but uh, we've seen red peas. But basically, this is what you get in our shops, in our cereals. Mm. I think they can be here. Are they in this picture? Maybe the ones right at the top. 
This that white sort one. of whitey yellow. No, right at the top this... on your right. This one. No, 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 the right. Right, no, the right, top right. Up. Okay. Oh, you've gone too far. Go down. <laughs> Go back up. You've passed it. Yeah, okay. right at the top. You try that up. No, right that one. Up. Yeah, that one. That one. Yeah. Which one? This one. That one. Yeah. No. Looks top, like butter right bean. Hand. Make a shoes. Right. Make a shoes. But that's what butter bean color. It it can be any of these, but these are of course category with them. That you have them like Roscoco, Nyayo. We give them the names, local names, Nyayo, Roscoco, and those are the names. Because mm. we're going yeah. to mix and this. So, so basically, we'll have, to, we'll, we'll have to bring it on in here because I'm also feeling my laptop is uh, almost shutting off. I think I'm having okay. my problem with my power system. So okay. Let's 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 continue the next class as we expand a bit on our on our further studies of how we expand. Okay, Coco is gone or is he still there? Coco, still you still there? there? Yeah, he's still there. 